Hey, what's going on guys? Daniel from ModBot here, and today we are gonna be talking about 3D printer enclosures. We are gonna take a look at the Wham Bam Hotbox as well. 3D printing enclosures is something that a lot of people are interested in. Uh, I often get asked what is, in my opinion, the best fully enclosed 3D printer. Sure, a lot of thermoplastics don't actually need an enclosure to print well or successfully, but if you are gonna be printing a material such as ABS, ASA, polycarbonate, some nylons, as well as other advanced materials, uh, having an enclosure is almost a must to ensure that you print successfully, especially if you're trying to print a part that's uh, of any size really. Even if you're not printing one of those materials, having an enclosure can still be really beneficial if you're in an area where there's a lot of draft, uh, high traffic environment with people walking by, or if you're in some kind of a garage where temperature is not very stable and can fluctuate from really hot to really cold. Um, this, if you don't have an enclosure in those kind of environments, then your prints may be much less consistent than if you had a stable controlled temperature environment uh, that a enclosure provides. So currently almost all the printers that I'm using are gonna be based off of the Prusa design where the bed moves forward and backward and the gantry goes on the X axis as well as climbs up the Z axis. And none of those machines are actually enclosed um, from the factory when you purchase them. They're all open form factor. And typically that's fine, but even for me, there are times when I've wanted to print with ABS and I'm not really able to do so unless the object is really short and flat, which is kind of a shame because on this spool rack behind me here, I've got a couple spools of ABS that I've been kind of wanting to use. So when Wham Bam reached out to me and said, hey, we've got a new enclosure coming out and uh, you know, being interested in you taking a look at it and reviewing it on your channel, uh, I took a look at it on their website and after looking at some of the features, I was certainly interested. So uh, in this video, we're gonna take a look at this enclosure to see whether it is something that you may want for your printer and what all it offers and what my experience has also been like with the enclosure. So let's get into it. <music> The enclosure arrived in a fairly large box, uh, at least length and width wise. Depth wise, it was very thin, which is sweet because this uh, enclosure is something that you can very easily pack away and it doesn't have to take up a lot of space. You can put it on a shelf or put it behind something when you're not using it. Um, setup, and I kid you not, is roughly 30 seconds, if not less. The whole thing unfolds and there are two big zippers that run along the left side and the right side. As soon as you zip those up, the machine is uh, freestanding and I was really impressed right away because once I built the machine it was a lot more rigid than I was expecting. Uh, looking over at the product photos it looked pretty rigid but I again wasn't sure photos don't really show everything but actually having it in front of me uh, it, it's a lot more rigid of an enclosure than I initially had anticipated. 
Right away with this enclosure, you can see that a lot of thought was put into it. There is filament feed holes on the left side, on the right side, as well as the top of the machine. There's also five filament feed holes in the back top of the machine. So if you've got a Prusa that you're trying to enclose and you want to run five filaments in for like the uh, multi-material unit, uh, you can do so with this machine, which is awesome. It also has quite a few Velcro pockets that can be latched or unlatched, which will give you the ability to feed in uh, various things. Like if you've got the Ender 3 and you want to use the spool holder on top of the machine, you can throw it in there, undo the Velcro, attach the spool holder, and it'll feed in directly from the top. So that was really cool. Another thing that was also uh, pretty neat was that on the left, right, and back, there's actually outlets for the uh, cabling to be ran. So like your power, uh, power cable, like if you've got a machine where you want to route electronics on the outside, you can then feed the cables very easily through the inlet slash outlet slots that are in the uh, hotbox enclosure. So the hotbox, the outside black material is a nylon material. It's nylon 600D, which has a fire resistant coating on it, which is awesome because a lot of people uh, I know are a bit paranoid about leaving their prints uh, or printers printing. So having something that uh, if there were to be something that goes wrong, potentially help to prevent from catching is always a positive thing. The inside is a metallic lined inside that's got uh, reflect heat reflections so it keeps all of the heat uh, inside, which is really good. And in between the two kind of sandwiched is a sort of hexagon uh, frame. And that's what gives the enclosure a lot of its rigidity and strength. On the front of it, there is a large clear window and the large clear window makes it where you can see directly inside at your print while it is printing. Uh, and it's got Velcro so you can undo that. And it's got another piece of Velcro on the top so that way it can stay out of the way, which is uh, pretty sweet. It also even has a thermometer on the very top so that way you can see what the temperature of the enclosure is, which was really exciting to see when it was printing because when the print started printing, I believe it said it was at about 24, 25 ish Celsius and mid print when I looked in there, it showed that the internal temperature was 32 Celsius. So. Uh, it certainly had climbed to quite a bit hotter than the ambient temperature of the room, which just goes to show that the enclosure was doing a uh, fairly good job of insulating and keeping that heat inside of the enclosure, which is exactly what we wanted. Again, one of the biggest highlights for me is how portable it is and easy to put away. I certainly don't need an enclosure uh, all the time for my 3D printer and it takes up space. So for those times I do want to print in a material that does require it, I can go ahead and pop it out have it ready to rock and roll in like 30 seconds. And when I'm done with it and I don't need it anymore, I can store it away. So this will certainly be being added to my kind of arsenal of 3D printing tools. So that way, if I get a filament in or just again, have a certain project that requires something like ASA, um, I can bring out this enclosure and use it. And then when it's done, put it away because I've got limited space and I'm constantly moving things around, uh, which was one of the reasons again, why I didn't want to build a full blown enclosure like I've seen people do online. For me, this is perfect. If you're in a similar situation, Situation. This could be a really awesome enclosure as well. So as far as printer compatibility goes, I'm using this on my Ender 3. Uh, Wham Bam has stated it works on the Ender 3, the Ender 3 Pro, the Ender 2, and the Prusa MK2 and MK3. They also list on their website the dimensions, the internal dimensions of the enclosure. So if you've got a Ender 3 style clone or a smaller form factor 3D printer, then this will of course be compatible. You just want to make sure that your printer actually fits within those dimensions. Uh, they also mentioned that they potentially will be offering various sizes in the future. I know that like with their uh, with their wham bam, their flex systems, they started off with a couple and then as demand grew, they scaled them and created different sizes. So uh, I would anticipate that if there's enough demand for the enclosure, they will also be offering this in various sizes. So uh, once again, guys, this has been the wham bam hot box, which did a killer job. I ran a 16 hour roughly uh, Witcher print of Geralt, as well as a little stand out of some green Matter Hackers ABS that I've had laying around for quite a long time. And I was really, really happy with the end result. Um, I actually just picked up some acetone for something that I was cleaning uh, and might end up doing a Vapor Smooth video as well. So we'll see, let me know what you guys uh, think in the comments below if you'd be interested in seeing that. But certainly if you're interested in this enclosure, I will place links down below as well, where you can find out more or purchase one for yourself. They are as of today available and in stock. And and again, if you're looking for the easiest enclosure that I've seen to get set up that has the widest range of uh, features and, and uh, just ease of use and 
really an awesome enclosure. Um, I highly recommend taking this, uh, taking a look at this and potentially picking one up for yourself. So on that note, thank you guys for watching and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace guys.